Good afternoon, I'm Bridget Taylor and this is Currency Wars. Let's have a look at where the week has taken us. Carnage has continued in global markets as commodities and stocks continue to slump. This is dragging the world out, meltdown and it has taken emerging markets to new lows. Meanwhile, the People Bank of China cut its deposit rate 50 basis points and its lending rate 25 basis points. And this highlights that the Chinese slowdown post its credit bubble is a lot more severe than many had expected. The volatility index saw a spike of 40% following these cuts. Decoupling is taking place as currencies in more developed states gain at the cost of weaker emerging markets. The Euro Rand correlation has clearly shifted. And you can see this if you look at a chart of the Euro and the Rand, which is clearly decoupled and moved away from one another. This shows the difference between the developed world and the emerging world, specifically in South Africa. Meanwhile, the biggest losers this week are currencies with a commodity base. The Australian dollar, the Canadian dollar and the Rand all saw major declines this week as a result. Also interesting to note is the deterioration of stocks and currencies that rely on exports to China. These include Turkey, Russia and South Africa, which we can see market declines in. Meanwhile, the stronger dollar, higher market volatility and recent Chinese growth concerns are most likely to push the Fed to only consider hiking later this year. If the volatility persists, we could possibly only see a push to rate hikes in 2016. Across the globe, it's clear that the monetary policy that has been implemented is a very blunt tool to support economic growth. In South Africa, it's glaringly obvious. Post the latest GDP data that saw a contraction of growth of 1.3%, and that is as a lack of severe uh, fiscal delivery as well as stimulus that is hurting the economy severely. Right, now that we've seen the lay of the land, and it certainly has been mad out there this week, I'm going to welcome my guests, Jan Slays Kramer from RMB and Andres Elias from Treasury One. Thanks, guys. So, you know, let's, first of all, we're going to unpack a little bit, um, but there's been a lot of noise. I mean, if you listen to commentators, you're getting one view on this side of the, the equation and then the other view on the other side, and you really are playing a black or red game. If we look at the volatility index, that is a clear indicator of how confused and how uncertain this market is currently. Jan, give us a feeling of Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> this week has been carnage. Yeah, look, I mean, financial markets have certainly not been for sussies this yeah. week, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, Monday morning definitely was carnage. I mean, we, ha we had um, the Chinese stock market fall out of bed on early hours of Monday morning. We saw a complete meltdown of emerging market currencies. The Rand even printed at 14. Mm. Although I think that level is still probably up for a bit of negotiation because if you look at the price action, it went from 13 Rand 50 paid to 14 Rand paid back to 13 mm -hmm. Rand 50. But yeah. it was Asian trading time, which is extremely Hun low liquidity. 100%. Right? I mean, there's perhaps a handful of banks mm. um, that actually are prepared to quote dollar Rand in, in the Asian session. And out of that handful of banks, there's probably another few that are on got their own trading platforms mm. and we all know what happens to a trading platform when volatility arises the liquidity disappears out of there so hence the the, the sudden move up to 14 on on monday you know i think once people came in on monday and kind of had a looked and assessed it you know the damage that had been done s some sort of normality did did come back into the market and then we saw a turnaround tuesday where everything pulled back mm. equity markets were back in the green uh, for most part of the day. The currency came back. We even traded um, marginally below 13. It did close back up at 13 and a half. And then yesterday we had a, a relatively respectable, you know, day of consolidation in narrowish ranges. And today, this morning so far in the session, we've seen the rank come back down to the 13 levels again. So Yeah, so it's, it's interesting times. I mean, we, you know, we were talking about it earlier, Andre, and you were just saying, you know, it's all this noise. And the investor and certainly the, the people watching this show, there is a lot of noise. I mean, it's not only us in financial markets that are hearing um, different views from different market participants, different impressions about how much growth we're seeing out of the US, what this impact is going to be on the inflationary look for the likes of the Fed, etc. So if we look at um, going forward and we've got this uh, Jackson Hole meeting that's happening, you're hearing a lot of you know, uh, central bankers and certainly the Fed officials in Wyoming talking about their views around these interest rate hikes. Do you think that um, this has played a part in terms of the um, outlook for the, the Federal Reserve going forward in terms of the interest rates, um, this Chinese meltdown that we've seen? 
Bridget, Yellen uh, had said to us over the last couple of months that interest rates should not just be determined on one figure, and that was the jobless or the job creating figure. She had always warned that it's going to be more figures, more economic data that's necessary, and focused on inflation. Mm -hmm. And over the last week and a half now, we've seen commodity prices tumbling, we've seen the oil price tumbling. That puts downward pressure on inflation for the Americans, and that pushes out the interest rate outlook. And the dollar's gotten stronger. Yes. And I've said from, for a long time now that I only think that an interest rate move comes in 2016, and I'm going to stick to my view. Mm -hmm. But the interesting one is here this morning that I will give everything that I own to somebody that is willing to sit out here and say, I know what's going to happen tomorrow. No, sure. I said yesterday to somebody that if you know what's going to happen tomorrow, you might commit suicide immediately, <laughs> or you might even go into a sort of deep sleep to, to wait for the good times tomorrow. We do not know what happens tomorrow. And as you correctly mentioned, noise. Everybody's got their own five cents of opinion. And it differs from person to person. So I think let's just bring ourselves back and just look at it from a very um, eagle eye perspective and say, you know, we've got this European economy that is slowly starting to show positive data. We've got the US economy, it's slowly starting to grow. The big caveat in the mix is the Chinese economy. And I think that that's where there's potentially a lot of upside risk. I mean, I look at the South African economy and I think we've got so many caps that are so negative. So we've got negative um, electricity, which is negative to production, negative to manufacturing, it speaks to a lot of fiscal underlying issues. We've got a current account that is largely funded at the moment by offshore flows. And if we listen to what um, the central bank governor spoke about yesterday, is the concern around those foreign flows leaving South Africa. Then we look at the fact that we, as a, as a business, if you're investing in South Africa as a, a business portfolio, it's not a great port of, of call because we've got such negative growth. So all of these things speak to upside risks in South Africa. Um, let's have a quick squiz and look at your view around the next NPC. Jan, do you think that they're in a position where they're going to have to protect the currency and get ahead of the curve just to um, keep up with the pace? Or do you think that this growth slowdown is going to be a massive caveat? You know, Bridge, I think at the moment the, the central bank's really caught between a rock and a hard place. Mm. You know, we, we've seen that this week in, in those diabolical GDP numbers that came out. I mean, um, almost everything is leaning towards and looking like a possible heading back into recession yeah. status again. So you can kind of understand what the Saab is trying to do by protecting, you know, they want to look after inflation because now we're going to import inflation with a weak currency and inflation has the potential to run away. But in hiking rates, and we've seen that already now, we're already hurting an economy that is, is is struggling to grow mm -hmm. and you know I think you were talking about US interest rates and China and everything and I think we've said it under numerous times on our on our chats here on a Thursday that you know everybody got ahead of themselves and has been looking at the US the US and interest mm -hmm. rates and is it going to be September will it be November is it going to be only January next year and we've said on numerous occasions you know China's China's actually the one to be looking at mm -hmm. and 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 slowly we're starting to see that chickens coming home to roost there and, and China's now having an effect on majority of emerging markets, mm -hmm. and, and we particularly being hit hard, because I think 47% of, of our exports were going off to China. Yeah, that's significant. Now, now, now previously, what we saw in 2001 when we had the RAND blowout to 1385, and then again in 2009 when we had the blowout in the RAND, you know, the, the, the weak rand helped exports and it helped the economy grow. But at the there moment. was appetite for exports. Exactly. Yeah. There was appetite for exports, there was appetite for commodities. China was growing at a rapid rate of knots. Now that's not happening at the moment. So with a high with a with a weak currency, the, the negative growth that's happening, almost slipping back into recessionary status, it's gonna be very hard. For the, for, for, the, for the Saab, I think, to actually increase rates. But yeah, you know, what does he do? Because as I say, they are caught between... And this is the thing, I think we, I mentioned it earlier in the, in the brief, was, you know, monetary policy is blunt. And the very sad thing for me in South Africa is that fiscal policy is on the back foot. I mean, we're not seeing those infrastructure type developments. We're not seeing sustainable growth in the South African economy. We've got this huge argument about uh, nuclear energy and the cost thereof and who's involved in what. All of this is noise, 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 but it doesn't solve the problem. So we, we're still at risk in South Africa. I'm going to put you guys in the spot and ask you for
for your views in terms of where we're going to from here. But I think that we can all say, you know, emerging markets are on the back foot and we must definitely be aware of the fact that the South African um, bar trade is under pressure because of all of those negative caps. So we're going to pull out the big guns. I'm going to put the guys in the block. Uh, stick with us and you can watch the new levels for the week. Right, so guys, let's have a look at the crosses because that's actually been quite significant. Obviously, we saw that brief blowout to 14 on the dollar rand, but that was marginally contained. But that movement between the euro uh, dollar and the dollar rand has been the most significant mover because you've got the strengthening of the euro and massive weakening of the rand. And that coupled together on the cross rate has been extremely, extremely concerning for a lot of our importers in South Africa. So talk us through what you've heard and what your views are going forward, Andre. I'm going to refrain from trying to give levels this week because it's just <laughs> not it's just not helpful. Um, what I am going to say to our viewers out there is let sanity prevail. Do not make hasty decisions. Um, take sound advice from people and pick your levels correctly and but manage your income statement and protect it from the volatility that we're seeing out there. Mm -hmm. So as I say, risk management is the name of the game and try and block out all the noise. But don't panic, people. Don't panic. Yeah. It's not times to panic. You don't just rush in and make a stupid decision at this point in time. You take solid advice and you let sanity prevail. Jan, have you got any uh, uh, insight for us? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think I'll perhaps add a, on to Andrea. I mean, I agree wholeheartedly, you know. Don't go and make silly rash decisions just because, you know, it's, it's looking like doom and gloom and you got to remember, Rand's a currency of extremes. When it's up at 13 and a half, everybody's calling 15s and 16s and 17s. Mm -hmm. and, and we've all been in this movie before, only to see it come back. I actually think, um, you know, we did see the decoupling of especially Euro Rand and Sterling Rand. We're mm -hmm. forgetting that Sterling yeah. Rand at one stage was above 21 to the Rand this week. <laughs> I mean, sure. um, yeah. so we've seen those come back significantly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so the, the, it almost looks like there is sort of, you know, common sense is starting to prevail and we are moving in the right direction. Definitely, I wouldn't be rushing into it now, but if you hold off, pick your levels. I certainly think you'll see Sterling Rand back down at the 1998 20 levels again. Uh, Euro Rand's come an unbelievably long way from the 1560 mm. on Monday. We're back down at the 1470s again today. And I think, you know, if Dollar Rand can get a close below 1290. 1298 13 i think there's probably a bit of scope to go a little bit stronger there too but it's definitely you know pick your levels and be patient don't just get caught up in the in the hype and the noise of the whole don't panic i think that's the message this week thank you very much both uh, jan and andre the message this week, guys, is don't panic. There has been a lot of moves in the market. If the VIX is anything to go through, that is 40%. That is unbelievably high levels of volatility. The RAND still remains a core week, but there is this consolidation happening in the market. So hold on to your socks. If you're an importer, look for good levels. Look at your balance sheet and head yourself carefully. Don't get taken aside by all of the noise in the market. There are opportunities. Speak to people that are watching the markets carefully and get in at those better levels. The volatility is likely to persist and hopefully this week ahead we start to see some sanity to prevail. However, um, if you'd like to send any of your questions or comments, you are more than welcome to do so at CNBC Africa, hashtag Currency Wars 410, or to myself personally at Bridget R. Taylor for your personal responses to the FX markets. Until next week, guys, don't panic and good luck in the trenches.